Hey there YouTubers, alright so in a way this is part two. Previously we installed the i5-13600KF using the stock cooler from the 12th Gen i9. You saw black screen, nothing happening, right? Basically now we need to update the BIOS on this motherboard. Now, unfortunately this does not have one of those little buttons or a dedicated USB so that you can do it without having the 12th gen uh, CPU in there to do the update. So folks, what we have to do is uninstall this CPU and put something in it, right? So we've got a few choices here. We've got a Celeron. we got an i3-12100F. Somewhere around here, we got an i7-12700. Um, had a bunch of other 12 gens, but, uh, you know, really, what's the cheapest CPU? Well, that's going to be the Celeron, right? So let me go ahead and uh, pull this thing out of here. And that's always not a good thing, folks. So when you're filming and you've got a camera in front of you, and you can't come in at a good angle <laughs> to hold on to things um, oops. so yeah this is the uh the stock cooler comes with the i9 12900 it really is not meant for an i5 13600 kf but um you know just to boot up it's gonna do the job right uh, but in this case, what we're going to do, another reason I put this on here is it's a lot easier and faster to install this CPU cooler than the one that the 13th gen is going to end up with. All right, so there is that. We'll clean this up, take the CPU out, and put the new one in. All right, so it's uh, relatively cleaned up. Now the good thing about when you get this uh, free thermal paste with the other CPU coolers, when you're making videos like this where you only need temporary solution, I use up that cheaper thermal paste. So uh, Celeron G6900, and this can go in only one way. And you can tell we're not getting it in there correctly. You start hearing that sound where they uh, could be doing some damage. You want to get that thing out of there. Um, all right, so it's seated. Triangle here, which matches this triangle on that. Um, I've got some cleaning up to do here still with this thing. But... Um, Drop this down, put that in place, crank it down. I've still got one stick of RAM in here. Now, put some thermal paste back on there. And we're using the uh, thermal right stuff that came with one of our CPU coolers. Don't need a whole lot on this CPU. So this stuff uh, does not flow very good. It's very thick. I'd kind of do a five-point pattern. Now in this case, where you have a circular CPU cooler, you know, dropping it right in the middle will work just as good. When you've got a rectangular CPU cooler doing some kind of other pattern may work a little better. All right, so we gotta get these in there. I honestly forgot which uh, which CPU cooler I was using, folks. <laughs> so if you read like Noctua's instructions, you know, I'll say put a four or five millimeter, four to five millimeter diameter bead right in the middle and 
And there's other people that sit down and really try to figure out what is the best pattern. Uh, let's see here. These are actually... Nope. So I've got one in. And all that other time I'm just sitting there rotating. Nothing's happening. I want to get this one in. Okay, that one's in. That one's in. And now, folks, I'm going to go tighten them all in. Now I'll uh, pause here, and uh, you'll see me done with that step so now we've got our stick of ram in there that's all we need to get to boot to bios now i've already done a bios update video with this motherboard but that was before 13th gen so all right 24 pin power connector CPU power connector and yes this is like I said in the other video sitting on top of a stool now we've got to uh, hook up we need a graphics card on there with HDMI I usually for these things like to take one that doesn't have a PCIe connector it'll make life easier one less thing to have to un undo. Man, that doesn't sound very good. Well, it sounds like there's sand in it. I can't remember if I bought this motherboard used or not. So, CPU power, 24 pin power, graphics card. We've got RAM. Flip this switch. Oh yeah, HDMI is already plugged in power switch now let's go see if this boots up okay so unlike the last video you can see that we um got to this point now what did i forget to do folks <laughs> we don't have the mouse or the keyboard hooked up so i'm going to go back and plug those in all right so keyboard's in so now that we have verified folks that this thing We'll boot up and we didn't make any mistakes and the motherboard's good now it's time to update the bios so we'll update the bios uh using basically i'm using a secondary computer uh, with a capture card to record this but we'll be able to um record while i search for the file and then we'll put a thumb drive in All right, so we'll go back real quick. So this is the 690P Wi-Fi D4 motherboard by ASUS. So we'll search for that. That pulls that up. And then what we want to do, folks, is... Go to this support right here. Click on driver utility. Actually, before that, CPU memory will show you what BIOS this is good for for 13 gen. So 13600KF, we need BIOS 1620. So we'll go here to driver utility and then click on BIOS and then show all so we are way down here possibly let's see if you uh lower left corner type in sysinfo that'll bring up your bios which one you have 2804 gosh april 
15, 2020, really? Oh, folks, we're looking at the wrong screen. <laughs> Sorry. On this computer, because we're not in Windows, BIOS version 14.02. So that is, folks, that's like the original version. I'm losing my mind here. Okay. No, it's not. 0407, 1402, right there. So earlier this year. So we want any of the BIOSes that are older than 1620. You see right here, next gen Intel, improved system performance. So we'll download this file. Then we'll go to the folder it's in. We will extract all. And then we need a thumb drive, folks. We don't have a thumb drive here. So I've got to plug a thumb drive in. Now, I, I've done this video already in a different, uh, different method using a capture card. All right, so we plugged in the thumb drive. And that popped up. So you can see a bunch of different files on here. And really, folks, what you want to honestly start with is a... It's kind of good to not have any of this, right? If this was gone, you want to have a thumb drive that is completely uh, clean, except for what you're booting, what your BIOS file is. So right click on this, so you can see this is formatted to FAT32. I actually always use NTFS. If you find, you know, one doesn't work, maybe try the other one. All right, back to our BIOS file. So like I said, we unzip this, open this folder. You got to click on this to do the BIOS renamer. Press any key. And I'm sorry, wrong computer. There we go. Now it's renamed. So we're going to take this folder, copy that, and put it over here. Now if you're like me where you're doing a bunch, you've done a bunch of these, you've got to make sure that you don't have one that's similar. All right, so this is going to go to our other computer. All right. So we're in the BIOS. I'm going to switch this over. And you can't see it right now, but I'm plugging in the USB. Now, let me make sure I use the right computer for this. So when you first boot up, for the very first time, you'll end up in easy mode. And in here, we want to click down at the bottom right to advanced mode, then to tool, tool. There we go, gotta click a little louder. Easy flash utility. Now this is where this gets tricky, folks. You have all these files on here. If you have a bunch of drives, and like I said, you want to make sure you don't have other folders that look similar. Uh, if you're, you know, building a bunch of computers, you might have a bunch of folders with different BIOS on it. Most of you, though, are not going to have this situation. So um, here's the folder we want. There's our file. Click yes. Do you want to read this file? Yes. Do you really want to update files? Yes. So usually before I do that, folks, I tell you to check the weather. Make sure everything's good. Make sure you don't have any uh, hurricanes, tornadoes, windstorms, that kind of stuff. You don't want the power to go out, okay? That's highly important. The other thing is to realize, is it worth me doing this BIOS update? 
do I have a legit reason to do this? Because, you know, potentially you could brick your motherboard, right? You don't want to do that. Now, if everything, if you have a reason to do it and the weather is good, then, you know, go ahead and proceed like I did. So what are other reasons that uh, you would do a BIOS update? Well, going from 12th to 13th gen, you know, it's a hardware thing, right? They, uh, they may also have added uh, additional types of RAM that, uh, you know, run faster. So a, a different variation of DDR4 or if you have a DDR5 motherboard, you might find there's a new model number from different manufacturers that, that runs or some of the existing RAM actually runs uh, faster. You're not limited to the slower speeds on there. Maybe your M.2 um, that didn't work. Now it works. So various, various reasons. Security reasons. You have... Hardware, software, um, some things, you know, may may run better going from uh, like 10th to 11th gen, excuse me, Windows 10 to Windows 11 may run better. And while that's going, we can just look at some of these. So I sped this up, but normally you would want to sit here and read all of these descriptions it kind of tells you what what they've done each time you know talk a lot about improving performance performance this one's compatibility for non k cpus improve system stability sometimes that can surprise you you know the more bios updates you have you know they're at least working to to fix some of the issues graphics card another hardware thing all right, let's go back. So this is taking a while. Now it would have been nice if this motherboard had the little button to allow you to update. So I'll pause this till it gets closer to the end. All right, so it is almost at the end, folks. Uh, wow, we almost missed that. Update successful, system will reset. So I didn't even have to hit OK. It did it itself. So now that this has happened, folks, um, this install has been done. I will, or the, excuse me, the BIOS update has happened. So it may come up with this, hit F1, enter the BIOS. Now that we've updated this, um, I know that the 13th gen CPU will work. I have no doubt in my mind. And you will start to see videos uh, with this i5 13600K installed on a Z690 motherboard. Uh, I've got to do some benchmarks with it, maybe uh, do a little overclocking. And so there you go. You can see over here, new BIOS 2014. Thanks for checking out the video, folks. Please like, please subscribe.